on the whole strategy of managing your multi-cloud. So I think this is the reason why I wanted to start with Andrew is that as you go through all the technology, one of the concerns that people have is when I go to this, am I going to overspend money or if I want to use multiple platforms, how to go about managing it, Andrew's going to offer you insights and solutions for helping address that concern. So all yours, Andrew. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ron. And uh, definitely appreciate the opportunity uh, to speak to um, the audience today. And, um, you know, I, th I think it's great that you gave me a chance here to just kind of talk a little bit about cloud health uh, before we kind of hand things over to, to some of the major cloud providers themselves and some of these other vendors that are going to have some, you know, really awesome things to talk about in terms of hybrid cloud and multi-cloud management. Um, but, you know, starting here with cloud health by VMware, you know, what we are is we're the leader in multi-cloud management, really helping to, you know, increase business value really at every stage of your cloud journey. Um, we partner with some of the largest cloud consumers in the world, managing, as you can see, over 11 billion in cloud spend annually. Um, we support customers in all the leading public and hybrid cloud providers. Um, so as you can see across the bottom of the slide, you know, AWS, Azure, GCP, even now Oracle, and then uh, of course your, your data center, your on-prem um, infrastructure as well, you know, through our VMware integration, you know, we, ha we have a lot of different ways to help drive um, that hybrid, hybrid cloud as well as the multi-cloud um, strategies. So VMware actually acquired Cloud Health in October of 2018. Um, they were a very successful customer of Cloud Health initially, you know, really saw the value of our platform to help them, you know, optimize uh, VMware's, you know, significant cloud footprint. Um, and now we're, we're leading VMware's multi-cloud management story. Um, so we're just really excited to be part of the VMware family and working with you know, many different customers across the world, helping to manage both you know, hybrid and multi-cloud environments. Um, so let's jump to the next slide here. So what we see here is you know, really some of the top reasons that, that customers adopt a multi-cloud strategy um, to take advantage of new and innovative services, you know, deliver products faster and to be more agile. But you know, once you once you get here, um, these customers are faced with challenges. You know, these challenges would include things like loss of control, um, trying to stay ahead of security risks, constantly escalating cloud bills. You know, these problems are more and more complex when you operate at scale. And uh, multiple teams start using different clouds, you know, deploying hundreds of workloads. Cloud operations really becomes a big challenge, um, especially when you're faced with, you know, learning traditional tools, um, trying to piece together a very disparate environment um, and really create common communication across, you know, all the different business units that rely upon your cloud, your, you know, your multi-cloud slash hybrid cloud strategy to really be successful. Um, so these are some of the sort of the promises and then, you know, the reality. And this is kind of where cloud health enters the picture. So this this graphic here, and I'll kind of walk you through from kind of the bottom up just to give you a bit of um, a background into, you know, some of the context of, of how cloud health is helping our customers. So what we do is essentially integrate into um, your different cloud environments as well as your, your on-prem environment. Um, and what we can do is ingest that information and the data through an integrated data layer. And this is inclusive of even your containerized environments and your on-prem environments. So really trying to provide not just a single pane of glass, which is sort of an overused kind of marketing term, but also a, a unified control plane, um, allowing you to optimize cost and performance, giving you visibility into you know, what's driving our costs, how do we manage um, increasing costs and make sure that we're staying in line with our budgets. Um, how do we build different policies and guardrails so that we can kind of manage by exception and be a bit more proactive in understanding as changes occur, you know, kind of getting on top of those, you know, whether they be cost spikes um, or whether it be maintaining um, well-provisioned environment, making sure that we're not wasting um, and that we're not, you know, overutilized. So there's a number of different ways that we can, you know, help drive operational governments, governance, and as well as, you know, help help with security and compliance as well. Um, what we'll be talking about a bit is what we call perspectives. And you can see that in the kind of the middle of this slide, perspectives, 
it's, it's a way that we normalize all of all of the data and help you create custom business groupings. Commonly, um, you know, the organizations are leveraging tags as a way to try to help identify, you know, how different resources are bucketed and, you know, man, whether it be to, to manage costs by a line of business or, or department, or perhaps it's understanding, you know, which applications and which products are driving our costs, you know, understanding a cost of goods sold, for example, and really driving um, P&L analysis. All of these different tags across a disparate environment, including, you know, multiple different cloud providers, including your on-prem environment, it can be very challenging to, to make sense of this large kind of complicated puzzle. So what Cloud Health Perspectives do is it, it you know, leverages those existing tags, but it also provides deeper insight into the metadata of all of your resources and helps group things um, in a common way so that across a multi-cloud um, you know, uh, footprint, you're going to see what those costs are inclusive of each different environment and it, being able to analyze things like performance, being able to understand your usage trends um, and, be, and helping you to you know, scale and grow effectively in the cloud while maintaining visibility and control throughout that process. Um, so let's move on. So next we're going to kind of break down a few different use cases. Um, so this slide here is just speaking to the ability to, to view all of your cloud and, and on-prem costs, you know, from a single, a single dashboard. Um, so here we're showing, you know, AWS and Azure, but we're also breaking down multi-cloud costs here by line of business. Um, so it's just simple and easy visibility, um, providing you with that that single pane view, and then giving you the granularity to really um, dig deeper into the data and understand why different changes are occurring, um, whether it be you know identifying a, a data transfer cost spike um, that may uh, occur due to an architectural change, being able to take action on that uh, on those insights quickly before you know a potential um, cost change really, you know, snowballs into into a larger problem. Um, so let's move to the next slide. So this is this slide here speaking to the perspectives uh, concept and feature that we provide. And this graphic here is just showing a project perspective. So this is really showing your multi-cloud environment, including your on-prem, and kind of tallying and, and, and aggregating all of that cost and breaking it down by project. In this case, giving you insight into you know which projects, which applications are driving the costs in an, in an all-inclusive um, kind of format. Um, and now you may be wondering, you know, how do we really determine uh, data center costs? Everybody has you know their own unique infrastructure and their unique kind of expenses that go into that uh, calculation. So what we've done is we've worked very closely with VMware and provide a service called Benchmark Pricing. And it's based upon all of VMware's customer base. And it's really intended to provide you with, with a baseline of expenses broken down into these individual cost driver categories. And each of these categories can actually be customized. Um, and as you drill into each of these different um, uh, categories, what you can actually do is really define very specifically you know, based upon the hardware you're leveraging, based upon your license modeling, maintenance and labor costs, even adding in your own kind of custom line items. Um, and what we'll do is we'll compare that against the industry benchmark. So this is a great way to kind of provide that visibility into what your data center costs really are. And it really helps to drive um, your planning and strategy as you maybe ship some of those workloads to the cloud or just begin to model out you know, what the long-term strategy is and how to most effectively leverage both um, the public cloud and you know, your private data centers. This slide here is speaking to the uh, cloud health ability to really um, visualize performance metrics as well as you know, be able to analyze usage. So whether it be you know, AWS um, kind of leveraging EC2 reporting and, and optimizing uh, performance and usage and right sizing across all of your workloads, or it's looking at your VMware you know, virtual machines and understanding um, which applications are sort of requiring, um, you know, greater capacity than others, really providing that unified 
kind of analysis across all the different clouds. It's a really powerful way to, to help um, ensure that things are running as efficiently as possible. This is an example of our right sizing, our VM right sizing um, for, for VMware servers. Um, so you, you'll be able to kind of analyze CPU memory network and disk metrics. Um, and the same type of capability is um, supported across all of the public clouds as well. Um, so we'll provide recommendations to allow for you know, monetary savings and improved performance. Um, this slide here is our migration assessment tool. And what we've done is taken that benchmark pricing concept, allowing you to really quantify your data center, your on-prem costs, and then compare what those you know, same workloads would look like across the three uh, major public cloud um, providers. So this tool is a great way to you know, help you in, in kind of modeling and forecasting um, any type of shift to the cloud, but it also helps you kind of make the right strategic choices and it even, there's a uh, utilization-based migration assessment. Um, you know, oftentimes you may have excess data center capacity. So things, you know, via, uh, servers may be over-provisioned. Um, but what we can do is actually look at the true performance of all of those applications so that when we do a migration assessment, we can essentially right-size uh, those workloads to really show you what the, the true cost in the cloud might be. Hey, Andrew. Yes, go ahead, Ron. Just, I just want to raise three points, and I've seen this in a number of communications. First is the risk of shadow IT has come up in many of my conversations, both in previous live events and in today's online world. This is a great tool, and I've heard this from many end users saying, I don't really know what's going on until I see a big bill, and Cloud Health can give you that insights well in advance to help not only avoid the security risk of shadow IT projects, but also the financial downside. I would also imagine, Andrew, this is very valuable as people are looking at 2021 budgeting. You're almost doing the hard work for them to provide the cost justification for these major projects. Is that reasonably accurate? Absolutely. Yep. That, that I mean, you, you nailed it. I mean, providing that visibility, giving you that proactive insight so that problems don't really turn into, you know, real large, you know, costly mistakes. But it's also empowering individuals across the organization through you know, automated reporting, really providing that common language across departments. You know, you know, to your point, there's just a lot, lack of visibility, especially as things become more complex with containerized environments. Being able to normalize that data, being able to provide everybody with the same type of reporting and the same insights is going to really drive effective communication you know, across the organization. And the final point before I want to make sure Andrew has enough time to finish up, Cloud Health is an independent business unit within VMware. You've seen the benefits of being part of VMware and that they have access to lots of benchmark data to help you understand how effective you are, how efficiently your operations are being run. I don't want anyone to think you must be a VMware customer. Cloud Health also has a number of entities they work with who don't do any business with VMware. Obviously, most organizations do, but that shouldn't be a turn if you're looking at these type of solutions. Absolutely, no, that's a great point. We work with you know organizations of all different sizes and maturity. Um, you know whether they be fully public cloud based or 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 a hybrid strategy or or leveraging other kind of um, data center providers as well. So that's a great point, Ron. Yeah. And just oh, as a time check, do did, did we have? How much more time for my for my piece did, did we have? I would go about here? five six minutes. Is that fine? Okay, absolutely. Sounds great. Just a couple more slides to uh, to speak to. Um, this slide here is showing you different policy governance uh, that the cloud health supports across you know all the different clouds and, and the data center. So whether it be kind of monitoring performance, you know, getting those proactive notifications if you know um, VMs, you know, virtual machines are sort of underutilized, um, you know, it can go so far as um, looking at cost spikes across all of your public cloud bills, and you can kind of set those guardrails to be as sensitive as you want them to be, and and really that's part of our, our POC process here. As a sales engineer, you know, I have the opportunity to work with a number of different customers, a number of different companies and use cases, and really gathering best practices um, from across industries and verticals. 
and kind of leveraging that uh, those industry best practices as we set customers up um, to really see the value of our solution during a during a trial period. Um, so I'll just take a few moments here to talk through some of these use cases. This is the the last slide, and and maybe kind of speak specifically of a of a recent engagement I had um, where I had the opportunity to work with a, a public um, health provider, healthcare provider, you know one of one of the largest one you know larger uh, healthcare providers. And really, what they were tasked with was better understanding their their AWS costs as well as their you know they had a large data center presence uh, through VMware, and really we were able to you know, consolidate their reporting, uh, combining both AWS and VMware environments, um, grouping by perspectives. So we were able to achieve um, views into their different environments um, by product as well as by purpose. So just being able to obtain that commonality across all of your environments um, is, is a huge value. Uh, being able to identify trends, improve budgeting and payback processes, drive accountability and ownership of infrastructure costs, you know, helping you know, developers and, and individual teams take better ownership and accountability um, for their you know, infrastructure. Really optimizing, identifying and alerting on waste, right sizing, um, and then leveraging the many different savings opportunities, whether they be reserved instances or savings plans through AWS, um, really being able to provide recommendations and, and overall uh, strategy. Um, and, then, and the last piece that we helped uh, this company with was around their Kubernetes management. You know, that's a, one of the challenges that a lot of companies face is lack of visibility uh, into a containerized environment, and that is one area where cloud health really brings additional value is being able to actually determine what different containerized tasks are costing the business and being able to help um, justify those costs and, and provide sort of a cost of goods sold or uh, analysis, um, incorporating the containerized infrastructure with, you know, sort of your, your non-containerized um, costs as well, kind of providing, you know, the full picture that can be very challenging to to obtain um, without without technology to assist. So I'll stop there, Ron, and uh, you know, thank you again. We'll see if there's maybe any questions. Um, if anybody has any questions. Uh, yes, that was excellent, Andrew. Uh, Brian had questions on two items. First, do you work with Oracle cloud infrastructure? And second. Do you work in DoD or high, highly regulated environments and work with the FedRAMP, which is the main protocol or contracting system for federal activities? Yeah, great question. So um, for, for Oracle, for OCI, yes, we, we're very excited to, to be working with Oracle. We, we do support uh, Oracle as a cloud provider with, with cloud health. Um, so we do, you know, we do have full support of that service. 